This is the story of an amazing season for Sunderland Football Club. They swept all before them on their way to the first division title and a place in the Premiership. Promotion was snatched away a year earlier in a heart-stopping penalty shootout at Wembley. But Peter Reid and his players turned the misery of losing into a year of glorious triumph. This time they were older, wiser and stronger. Team spirit was unshakable. Failure was not an option. But no one could have expected quite what lay ahead. The goals kept on going in. The rest of Division 1 was left way behind. Records crumbled along the way. No one could stop them. The gates to football's big time were opening up. This was the year Sunderland were champions. Despite the huge disappointment of losing the playoff final, there was plenty of optimism for the season ahead when the players returned from their summer break. Peter Reid introduced four new faces to the squad with the spotlight on defence and a nod to the future. Winger Neil Wainwright arrived from Welsh club Wrexham for a fee of £100,000. He was given a couple of chances to shine before injury cut his season short. Midfielder Jerry Harrison came from Burnley on a free transfer, but played only once in a Worthington Cup tie before moving out to Luton on loan. Lapses at the back had cost the club dearly towards the end of the playoff season. The boss put that right by splashing out a million on big Berry centre back Paul Butler. Cult hero Lionel Perez had made a surprise summer move to Newcastle. The keeper who took his place proved to be just as big a hit with the fans. Thomas Sorensen cost a million pounds from the Danish club Odense. The great Dane went on to have a record-breaking season. Sunderland began their build-up to the new season with a trip to Main Road to face one of Peter Reid's former clubs, Manchester City. The match was a testimonial for long-serving City defender Ian Brightwell, but it was a perfect opportunity for some of the summer signings to get to know their new teammates. The match itself finished goalless. It was a fairly low-key affair. But it was Thomas Sorensen who provided most of the talking points with a string of fine saves. He set himself a high standard and then he lived up to it. Sunderland arrived at Hartlepool's Victoria Park on the back of a successful trip to the West Country which produced three more wins. Last season's top scorer Kevin Phillips hadn't made much of an impact in the build-up games, but the little man didn't take long to put his stamp on this one. The story of the night was written by a player from the home team, though. It's doubtful whether midfielder Ian Clark will ever score a better goal than this in his entire career. But it's equally doubtful whether he'll ever have a more embarrassing moment than this, just 60 seconds later. It finished 2-1 to Sunderland, so they were unbeaten pre-season. But Peter Reid's men were just getting started. The fireworks were impressive. The dancing girls were looking good. Ah, the balloons were all right, I suppose. But nothing compared to the 41,000 fans who turned out for the season's opener. Thomas Sorensen and Paul Butler made their league debuts against QPR, who made it a bad Good Friday on their last trip to the Stadium of Light. But last season's top scorer made sure there were no mistakes this time. Great. Just a little touch that found Quinn. It really would have been a glorious goal. Quinn down. Johnson, again coming in for that wider position, an absolute
absolutely cracking it. Taken forward now by Scott. Sees Johnson. Then again, he's deep and challenging the keeper. There's a handball there, and that's a penalty. Kevin Phillips, the Nationwide League player of last season, puts it away with typical confidence. And Sunderland are ahead. Mighty relief from the Stadium of Light. But the win came at a cost. Midfielder Lee Clark broke his ankle in this challenge with Keith Rowland. Clark was stretched off and wouldn't appear again until November. Sunderland began their Worthington Cup campaign at York City. Darren Williams was made skipper for the night on his return to Bootham Crescent. Can't work there by Tinkler. Oh, that's gone in. And Diccio has broken his duck in the most extraordinary way. Well, Andy Warrington got caught cold and Diccio kept on going and got the reward for it. Wide for Summerby. First time ball looking for Diccio against the bar. And he's got the follow up and he's got the second. And Peter Reed's faith in him is being repaid in this first half. Scott's deep, deep cross set up the move. Summerby first time. That was a good ball in. Diccio's header was unlucky not to be in the first time, but he followed up impressively. Defender Andy Melville had returned to the starting lineup at York and kept his place for the trip to Swindon. The Welshman would turn out to be one of the season's real unsung heroes. Walters, that's an awkward one to deal with. Sarsen's come for it, not the most convincing of clearances. Sarsen have a lot of defenders there. They haven't cut out the cross in Onura. If he Onura, 1 0 Swindon. Johnston. Phillips, defender trying to hold him up, Phillips, that's the equaliser, Kevin Phillips can't give him that sort of room, always looking for the angle there, the defender didn't do enough, and Phillips found the corner of the net. The Worthington Cup's second leg with York gave summer signing Jerry Harrison and youngster Mark Maley the chance to make their debuts in a match that looked like a formality for Peter Reid's side. For the two-goal lead from the first leg, the home side could relax. Kevin Phillips did the business again, and it was all going to plan. But City were determined to go out with a bang. A super strike from player coach Neil Thompson. But Martin Smith topped that with the winning goal. 2-1 on the night, 4-1 on aggregate. Sunderland's Worthington Cup adventure had begun. The visit of Tranmere Rovers to the Stadium of Light meant an emotional return for ex-Sunderland favourite Craig Russell. He must have wished he'd been back in the red and white stripes come 10-5. Diccio's made a good diagonal run. Phillips trying to fill the space in the middle. Here's Diccio, here's Phillips. Great goal, good movement. And Phillips again, the man on the spot. Summerby about to take the free kick. A second now would really wrap it up. Diccio, and there it is, absolutely on cue. Well, that's a nice first touch. And some of he's got into the middle of Mullins there. 3-0, three, three minutes after the restart, John Mullin. Johnston. Smith's touch first time, and Diccio, that's a fourth. And Martin Smith, his first touch, sets up another goal for Danny Diccio. Johnston. Gray, absolutely going up like a train here. Gray needs a first-time ball in there and gets it. And that's another one. And it's a first goal for Paul Butler. 
Kevin Phillips was the top goal scorer in England the previous season. He picked up the golden boot before lining up against his old club, Watford. But the home side were in for an early shock when Alan Smart gave Graham Taylor's team the lead. Normal service was quickly resumed, though. Phillips. Johnston's made the run down the left. Defenders frantically trying to close him down. Onto the right foot. He loves to get that angle, Alan Johnston. 1-1. One, one. Free kick, Summerby. Straight through the wall and straight into the back of the net. And Sunderland have got the lead now. Summerby blasted it. Defensive wall didn't do its job. Summerby with the corner. Butler gets up well. And Diccio! And it's 3-1 now. Great response from Sunderland. Gray just chipping it in. Balls at the far post. That's a fourth. And it may well have been Andy Melville who got the final touch. Kevin Ball got up to it superbly. Really nicely floated free kick. And Melville may well snatch that one for himself. Sunderland have started off so well following their disappointment of last season. Um, and for a period of time, it looked as if we might, as I say, spring a surprise. But once Sunderland got into their stride, then it was going to be very difficult for us to sort of uh, keep them on. They're like a sort of tide coming at you all of the time. And they're very powerful and very strong. They're doing well. Next up was a revenge mission at Ipswich. Memories of a painful defeat at Portman Road were about to be wiped out. Gray has burst forward to pick it up from Johnston. Three in the middle, and Mullen arrives and scores! Wow, what a great strike. What a great goal. Fast, flowing movement from the visitors. Johnson, Matthew. Good work from Matthew! Oh, he's hit the post! And Phillips this time is onside, one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. 2-0. And Kevin Phillips continues his goal-scoring start to the season. It's his fifth already of this campaign, and Ipswich made it all too easy for him. Sunderland were off to a flyer in the promotion race. That playoff defeat at Wembley was cruel, but it had just made Sunderland all the more determined to get it right this time. Like I've told loads of people, we stopped on the way home from Wembley. Um, we had a, a bit of drink, a sing song, and it was important we'd done that. We you know we'd worked very hard together for the whole year. We were all very disappointed, and it was important that we didn't just go all our separate ways afterwards. I mean, we was only meant to stop for one quick drink and away. But I said to the secretary when he said, like, let's go, I said, no, hold up, we need to stay here, and we need to really commiserate with each other and have a few scoops and that. And the gaffer turned around and said, yeah, you're right. Uh, so we stayed there, we had a bit of a song and a dance and Dickie Ord led the singing, he was absolutely superb. And you've got to understand that's coming from a lad that had been left out of the team, who's a Sunderland supporter at heart. And you know, he was very disappointed, but he could see how upset we were. And he wanted to try and put a smile and have a laugh back on our faces. And, and Dickie done that, he played a major part in that as well. Um, and I remember like looking at the lads and obviously I mean, you've got to understand inside you, you're very, very disappointed, but it was important that we had a, a laugh together. And then we just said, right, we'll make this year our year. And I remember Niall turning around, when I, mean, I can't actually say what he said, but he was along the lines of, well, absolutely, this year, like that. Uh, and I'm glad to say he's been proved right, but the lads were very determined after that. And that's why when we came back for pre-season, I think you see a, quite a little streak of determination amongst the lads. <laughs> Everything was going well, and when lowly Bristol City arrived on a Tuesday night in early September, it looked like another three points were there for the taking. But there was a sting in the tail. Some of it. Williams, who was picked by the England under-21s, but had to pull out through injury. And Welsh hasn't held it, Phillips! What a strike! Brilliantly executed! And the goal-scoring machine firing on all cylinders what a finish this is going away from goal on the left foot bang top corner aimed here towards Dickio and it's reached him and Phillips again off the underside of the crossbar another rattling shot from him and this one goes wide 
Phillips dropping deep. And through goes Dicchio again. And was Deitch's challenge unfair? It was. The penalty's given. Kevin Phillips. One goal already. He scored from the penalty spot on the opening day. And this one's saved. Oh, what a save. Bell. Anderson. Oh! What an incredible goal! Wolves' Robbie Keane had been attracting attention from the Premiership, and he showed why when Sunderland visited Molyneux. But it was the Wayside's own golden boy who had the last laugh. Swift turn by Froggart, and he's got all the skill to make life very difficult for Sunderland. Supported by the two strikers, it comes to Keane! Time is all but up, they take it quickly. Wolves are in disarray at the back. And there's still a possibility, off the post, and in at the second attempt, and Sunderland has scored through Kevin Phillips. Chester City had a financial crisis on their hands as they came to Wearside for the second round of the Worthington Cup. Peter Reid had a family reunion with younger brother Sean on his hands. But Big Brother wasn't handing out any favours on the night. Left-back Martin Scott opened the scoring with a powerful free kick. Kevin Phillips made sure Sunderland were heading for the next round before half-time. Then substitute Michael Bridges wrapped up a comfortable 3-0 win in the second half. He made his entrance after Kevin Phillips picked up a serious toe injury. It was bad. The top scorer wouldn't play again for nearly four months. With the little striker in the stand, Sunderland were now without both of their first choice forwards. Would they struggle to get goals? Here's your answer. Diccio, bridges are both there. That's a well-timed tackle from Marsh. Still the ball into the middle, and that's an opening goal! And it's Bridges! What an entrance! It's five minutes gone, they're already one up. Here's Michael Gray, they're two up now! Michael Gray, in off the post! 2-0 to Sunderland! Diccio then, from the penalty spot, to put Sunderland 3-0 ahead. Confidently done! He's done well here, and Ray, oh, that's a fine finish from Alex Ray. Ray is through the middle, so two Bridges. Here's Michael Bridges, could this be five? It certainly is. Bridges gets the second, and this is turning into an absolute pasting. Bridges for Johnston. Johnston around his man. Johnston off the bar. Again, Bridges in the middle, Bridges got to it, not away yet, oh, where did he get in from there? Vigio again! Bridges turns inside, he's looking for a hat-trick, remember, and Ray, oh, splendid finish! And it is seventh level, all right. I think that we played particularly well for the first 45 minutes and we've, we've got goals and gone in front and then we've had a chat at half-time uh, about getting it wide and getting our, our wide men on the ball a lot more. And I thought second half, I thought we played really, really well. I thought some of the, some of the attack and play was with pace and power. I thought it was really good football. At like this moment in time, you're just glad you haven't got to come back here again this season, eh? I just hope we don't pick them in the cup. <laughs> The Worthington Cup return at Chester was a foregone conclusion. So the match wasn't one to write home about, but Alan Johnston's winning goal made it all worthwhile.
Portsmouth were going along nicely when Sunderland went to Fratton Park. Sammy Igo's effort meant an upset was on the cards. Someone certainly upset the cameraman, but Alan Johnston's equaliser was colourful enough. Sunderland was still unbeaten. Carrow Road was the venue for Sunderland's third away trip in seven days. Peter Reid had never beaten the Canaries in his time with Sunderland, and that wasn't about to change. And towards Quinn, who's in behind Mackay and has put Sunderland ahead inside three minutes. Ray, the provider this time, Mackay backpedalling, and a clinical finish from Niall Quinn. On by such. Roberts arriving. And Edie gets the goal. Edie across to take the free kick. Mackay's made his run. Lincoln's cross. And Marshall's punched it straight into his net. Cross from making. Quinn had gone up, but it was Marshall who made the touch. Only one league win in the month of September, but Sunderland was still unbeaten, and Wembley's fall guy had come back from that disaster to start the season in great style. After it had happened, it was uh, it was a bit of a bit of a killer to be honest, but. Uh, the lads, the lads came round us, rallied round us, and uh, they were superb. Um, the gaffer and I mean everybody really. Uh, the letters I got off the fans and everything was superb. But obviously I got that many I couldn't go around and thank every single one of them. I mean they came from everywhere around the country. Um, but I thought to myself, well why should I let this one kick of a ball um, knock my whole career down in the bin basically? Um, and the manager just said to us, he says that if you show great character, he says uh, you're a strong enough person to get through this. And uh, that's the way I looked at it. Having put seven past Oxford in their last home match, the fans expected more of the same against Bradford. Alan Johnston was looking to hit the target for the third game in a row. But the Yorkshiremen would prove to be the season's surprise package. And the big central defenders are looking for something knocked in. Oh, it's a good worked free kick, that. Still Sunderland now, making off the support to Sunderland. He's continued his run. And that comes through to Dicio. This is a chance. Good block by the keeper. And Johnston just over the top. Two great chances there for Sunderland. Over for Robbie Blake now. Gray is the defender. Blake's opened up room. Great save there from Sorensen after sharp work indeed by Robbie Blake. The Hawthorns on a Sunday lunchtime, and former Sunderland manager Dennis Smith had complained about the early kickoff. But it was the Buggies who were quickest out of the blocks before skipper Kevin Ball led his side on the comeback of the season. Flynn. James Quinn. And inside Gray, good delivery. Kevin Kilban's under a cross, and Hughes has turned it home. It's hot shot Hughes again. It's 1 0 West Brom. Cleared by McDermott. Hughes here, troubling Butler. He's through again, Hughes. His free kick. Oh, it's there! Melville was the player who got in. Oh. And Sunderland got the goal they pray. Left by Quinn. Ray slips it through. Chance for Bridges. Could this be the equaliser? Yes! What a quality strike! It's the substitute who's ripped out. This is a cracking goal from the youngster. Bang! Get in. Miller, no chance at all. Beautiful strike. 15 yards. Fat post. Textbook stuff. 2-2. Reading. That's better now we've got to win. 
in this. Some of his latest kick. Butler was powering in, it was Carver who got it clear. Quinn's up there, and turned in by Kevin Ball! The Sunderland captain caps the recovery from 2-0 down, they're three to ahead. The unbeaten record looks to be retained, great header from Quinn, and Ball swivels, he doesn't get many. And that's a great finish, and what a great reaction, really punches the air. There was plenty of chances both ends, and like a 2-0 down. Well, we've just got to go for it, but they kept on coming. Uh, but like I say, I just thought they'd run out of steam, and then that's where we got in, uh, into the game. But uh, all credit to my players, they kept on going, and uh, we got the rewards in the end. Sunderland were off the top. They've been replaced by Huddersfield Town. Now the two teams met at the impressive McAlpine Stadium. Bridges getting possession there. Bridges is away here as well. It's not an easy chance. It gets a cut from Morrison. Ball in his corner. Near post flick there. Some of them got it away yet. Stewart. Oh, that's an outrageous goal. Marcus Stewart. Sunderland still searching for this equaliser. Ball! Classic near post flick, and Ball was on the spot. Hard to deal with there, and Ball finished it. Struggling Berry certainly wouldn't have fancied their trip to the Stadium of Light. But Neil Warnock's men did put up a brave fight. Eventually, Danny Diccio came off the bench to put Sunderland back on top of the table. He was just one of the men who stepped up during the season when injuries threatened to knock the promotion run off course. This year has been a squad game, most definitely. Everybody's played their part. I'm a, I'm a big believer in that, and I think if people were to look along the teams that have played in all the games this year, they would look and say, he's right there. Uh, people like Deitch have come in, Michael have come in, at times John Mullin, Alex Ray, Martin Scott. The whole squad has played a massive part. Darren Holloway's come back recently. Uh, you've got Gavin McCann. I mean, that's just to name a few, and I've probably missed out a couple. Andy Marriott, he plays at Grimsby and, and stuff like that. And do you understand it? It's like everybody's played their part, and, and Deitch scoring the win. I mean, he's, he's got, had a good goals return record this year, Deitch, and, uh, and that, he just showed his value to the to the team there by scoring the winning goal. And again, very important three points. Sunderland took a break from the hectic league programme with the visit of Grimsby in the third round of the Worthington Cup. Thoughts of Wembley were just starting to creep into people's minds. Gallimore. That's a nice run there, no good. And that's the first goal for Grimsby. It was well worked. And it was finished off by Lee Nogan. Sullivan with the responsibility to deliver. And Martin Scott, one of the biggest men forwards. And back was Groves. One to fight for again. He a little head down there. <laughs> and it's Michael Bridges yet again. That's his fifth goal of the season. And he's just got that knack of coming up with them. Determined, challenging all the way along the line by Sunderland. Once, twice, three times, and Bridges stuck out a leg, and that is 1 1. Sunderland is back really deep with Bacon well ahead of him. Here is the fullback. How can he do a Sunderland and get it into the middle? Quinn, that was an absolutely golden chance. Mullin, Quinn turning, and this time finishing off the job. Niall Quinn, the big smile, gets another chance and takes it. With six minutes left in this one, he got up, brought it down, spun, and planted it away from Davison. And Sunderland, for the first time, are ahead. 14 games played no defeats. The writing was on the wall for the rest of Division One.
November kicked off at the Reebok Stadium with another Sunday special in front of the TV cameras. Most people had expected Colin Todd's Bolton Wanderers to be up there with Sunderland, but they couldn't stop the Wearsiders. Quinn's layoff and Dickio. Johnston with another strike. Goal for Sunderland. A rare venture into the Bolton half. And Alan Johnston right against the run of play puts Sunderland ahead. Quinn makes it. Dickio stretches. Back to Johnston. Curling shot. 1 0. And this has Quinn on the chase and he's got beyond Fish. Fish has to recover, but did he use his hands? It doesn't matter. Quinn's turned it in. Well, the referee's looked at the linesman and has allowed the goal to stand. And now, what a double blow now for both Wonders. Is there a tug here? Bit of a wrestling match, but Fish takes his eye off it with the right foot. Quinn says thank you. Off the post, 2-0. Gray here puts it through, Quinn steers it back, Bridges! And leadership of the First Division is signed, sealed and delivered. Quinn, great intelligent cutback, good first touch, Branding eats a touch, tries to just clear it over the bar and nestles in the top corner. Two days later, Sunderland were back in the northwest at Gresty Roads where they made short work of crew. Back for ball now. And this is Dicio, and that's got in. Sunderland ahead after 11 minutes, Danny Dicio. And that's a fine ball out wide for Michael Gray. Now, can he find the finish? Well, oh, I'll say he can. 2-0, great goal. Michael Gray came storming through onto that one and absolutely blasted it home. This is Mullen out wide. And he's got the cross in as well. Quinn's there. That's another one. So hard to handle, Mark Quinn. Really well floated in by John Mullin and out of the keeper's reach. Good tackle by Williams. Bridges. Oh, shows him the old shuffle. Couldn't stop him. Bridges looking to go all the way. Great finish from Michael Bridges. He's got some talent this lad. Determination as well. Two defenders could do nothing about it. Thank you. Scott. Oh, well, they put themselves in a mess then, and Colin Nickel gets a consolation. Martin Smith came into the starting lineup when Grimsby returned to the Stadium of Light on league duty. The fans' favourite certainly made the most of his opportunity. Johnston with this corner then. Keeper stayed where he is. Quinn! Great reactions again from Davidson. Oh, that's a goal! And it's Martin Smith, a tremendous effort, and Sunderland have got the lead. They've battered down the door then. Davidson, so unlucky, he made a tremendous save from Niall Quinn. It came out to Martin Smith, they absolutely crashed it back in. The keeper had no chance. And Bridges has done well, getting balls in there. Neat footwork from Michael Bridges. Johnston, Quinn is with him. Johnston onto the left foot this time. Great ball in, and Smith there, and it's another one for Martin Smith. A great goal with the boot, and another fine strike with his head this time. Well, Martin Smith is really grabbing his chance today. And still Grimsby press forward when they get the chance. That one is loose, and that's one back. Groves, the skipper, straight away, within a minute. Johnston now. Quinn, shielding it. Feels the handball, but it's still a goal. And Quinn turns and runs home his fourth goal in four games. They appealed Grimsby defence for a hand then. But Quinn took no notice, turned round, 
smacked it away. Uh, that goal really could be decisive this time. The Worthington Cup fourth round had Sunderland up against Premiership opposition. An emotional return to Goodison Park for former Everton hero Peter Reid. It turned into a long night on Merseyside. Well, the boot of Sorensen there might just have opened the door for Bridges. And it's 1-0 Sunderland, and the assist goes to the goalkeeper. The goal goes to Michael Bridges, but it was the clearance from Thomas Sorensen that opened the Everton door. What about this for an assist? Straight from Sorensen's boot, a lovely take by Bridges, and a swift finish as well. And the crowd are trying to roar Everton back into this one. I wonder if the way back in is through a John Collins free kick. The keeper's dead centre of his goal. Collins tries to beat him and does. It's going to be down to a test of character from the penalty spot. The Sunderland players were back on the spot. But they've been through their penalty heartbreak in the playoff final. They weren't having that again. Chris Makin was the only Sunderland player who missed. But Everton's John Oster lost his bearings, and it was just like Wembley. It was into sudden death. And the save is made, and it's Sunderland who go through into the last eight of this year's Worthington Cup. Well, they give me a great yardstick because uh, I've got like eight out who, who, who could get in my first team. And um, all credit to the lads who, who were in there today, they've done brilliant, but when we get these lads fit, you know, it was going to be a real good competition for places. Um, but the fans were great as well. I mean, you know, they've, they've come a long way and there was thousands of them. And I'm pleased for them because the last time, I mean, it was heartache at, uh, at Wembley and at least we've won one for them. More good news. This match saw Lee Clark back in action for the first time since the opening day of the season. Skipper Kevin Ball had missed all the drama at Goodison Park. He'd be back soon, but Michael Gray would be out for a month with an ankle injury. Gray's absence would give Martin Scott a chance to re-establish himself at left-back. He returned as skipper at Port Vale. Quinn gets up well. Bridges. Nice bit of control, that. Clark's made a good run. That's gone in now. It's an own goal. It's Neil Aspen. Sunderland have got the lead. Summerby. Bridges again has a look up. And Quinn's there. That's as easy as you like for 2 0. Lovely cross. Bridges had a look up. Pilkington completely in the wrong place. And always a goal. Sunderland fans were loving their trips to the Stadium of Light. They were full of confidence, and why not? 24 games, and they hadn't lost. No one expected Barnsley to knock them off course. But all good things must come to an end. Well, there could be a break if Ashley Ward can get to this before Sorensen. And he may well do. He's battling on Ward, and he's got the goal. Number 14 for Ashley Ward. Steamrollering his way through, and Barnsley have snatched the lead. Sorensen then to face Ashley Ward, looking for his second goal. And he's put it way over. And it's fallen now for Melville, he's hit the post, has he? The Dyer is in here with a chance of making it absolutely commanding position now for Barnsley. Scott now to knock it in. Quinn wants to get a flick on there and does do. Looking for another penalty, they've got it this time. There goes Scott, and he's tucked that one away, no problem at all. And somebody got one back. 
great relief at the Stadium of Light. Scott kept his head. People went the wrong way, and he tucked that one away really neatly. Clark. Johnston supporting him, so too Scott. Here's Martin Scott. Dicio getting held, but Quinn was in there, and that's the equaliser. And now Quinn has come off the bench and done it for Sunderland. Eventually, the aerial bombardment just had to come off. Another excellent ball delivered in, and that was a fine header from Niall Quinn. That's neat by Marcel and dies in the middle. Just about enough defence there to deal with it. That's another penalty. And Darren Barnard can put Barnsley back into the lead here. It's 3-2 Barnsley. Barnard really composed with the penalty. And it is another shock for Sunderland. The run was over, so Peter Reid went shopping. Gavin McCann came in from Everton for half a million pounds. The midfielder was on the bench against Sheffield United at Bramall Lane. So how would Sunderland react after finally tasting defeat? It's curled in nicely, and at the back post, it's a goal for Niall Quinn and Sunderland. The big man left unmarked, flung himself into the header, and it's goal for Sunderland. Making. Oh, it's a good ball in, and Bridges has made a run to get in. Brilliant turn! That's an absolutely magnificent goal from Michael Bridges. It was a goal that had everything, and that is the hallmark of a great striker. They're getting more and more frustrated, and Bridges is onside. He can make it three. Michael Bridges, surely. He can score them from anywhere, and he can do it anyhow. And it's men and boys here at Bramall Lane today. Oh, it's a lovely ball drifted across into the path of Johnston. And suddenly get a fourth goal. That's a penalty. Never get a better chance. And here for Makin, and a shot from him, it's goal number four. But it come any easier than that for Niall Quinn. Well, it's 4-0, it could have been 5, 6, 7-0. The end of November, Sunderland's top of the table, one defeat so far. Peter Reid didn't need much cheering up. Even though we weren't our, our most fluent, you know, the boat result was a great result. And to go to Goodison, um, I think Farewell and Williams played in the middle of the park that day, uh, to draw and then win on penalties, sort of laid the ghost of Wembley, so to speak. You know, it was a terrific uh, performance by the players. And uh, it was a great atmosphere, um, one each in the game. Bridges got an outstanding goal, do you remember that? Um, vividly, and uh, we played some good stuff. And then uh, the defeat, I, I think it was Paul Butler was suspended, and Adam Williams went in there. And it was a, it was a strange, it was a crazy game. I think uh, they went in front and missed the pen, and they got someone sent off. And then I think they went two up, we fought back, um, and then they've done us on the penalty. But um, it, it had to be, you know, we had to get beat sometime, but it was just certainly strange uh, football match. But, uh, we, we got on with it, I think we went to Sheffield United uh, and possibly it was one of our best uh, performances of the season. You know, we went there very, very positive and played great stuff and scored great goals. And Mickey Bridges got two and, you know, we looked, we, we looked really... Um, people were looking at us and, you know, when you get a defeat, people were saying, well, there's the bubble burst, but no, we, we just got on with it. <laughs> The Wearsiders had managed to avoid the big guns when the quarter-final draw for the Worthington Cup was made. But second division Luton had former Sunderland striker Phil Gray gunning 
for his old club. And it's Johnston again who gets the chance to deliver. Little flick there by Melville. It's gone in. And Sunderland have got the lead. Johnston knows that Scott is pushing on into that position again. Forward now for Bridges. Bridges gives it the shuffle and the finish. And another super strike from Michael Bridges. He's really got some skill on the ball. Great trickery and an accurate strike. Somebody looks up. Alexander, who's worked so hard, gets it away for ball to knock back. Bernard Quinn. Great goal by Niall Quinn. Oh, superbly finished. Two late, late strikes of real quality. They've uh, wrapped it up in style now for Peter Reid's team. Peter Reid took time out before the Stockport game to visit children in the city's general hospital, showing that football isn't the be-all and end-all for even the most passionate of managers. Go on, let's see what's in there. <laughs> Fans were given the chance to pick a new home strip for next season prior to the match, but Peter Reid didn't have too much time for the fashion show. He was more concerned about the state of the pitch. Someone forgot to turn on the undersoil heating. Thankfully, it didn't matter. Bridges for the tricks again. Oh, that's really beautifully done. Difficult for keeping together. Somerby, he's got it. It was tough on the keeper, but no mercy at all for Nicky Somerby. The match also marked a return for midfielder Alex Ray. He'd had six weeks off while he dealt with personal problems. Nicky Summerby's winner against Stockport was the winger's last action until the new year. Martin Smith was once again his replacement, and once again, he was up to the job. Bridges has Quinn in the middle, he has Clark for support. Okay, clever footwork. Smith, it's there. Martin Smith comes in from the cold again and strikes. And that is Sunderland's 50th league goal of the season. They're in charge again. Smith, a oh, lovely touch. Clark, oh, that was so unlucky. That would have been magnificent and still could be. Quinn over the top. Two minutes and a half time. Ray's corner. Melville headed off the line. That's good work there by Melville. And that time it is a goal. And it's Butler who's come forward. Paul Butler gets his second goal for Sunderland. Gavin McCann made his first start for the club when Terry Venables brought his Crystal Palace side to Sunderland for a rearranged fixture in mid-December. Martin Scott gave the home side the lead with a penalty. But Palace would prove to be a stern test of the Wearsiders' Premiership credentials. They had to wait until the closing minutes of the game before the three points were assured. Substitute Danny Diccio doubled the advantage. It finished 2-0. Birmingham City were the first division's form side as they prepared for Peter Reid's men at St Andrews. Michael Gray was on the comeback trail and he had Sunderland's best chances. His first effort was well saved. His second flew wide after a good move. The match finished goalless, but only because City defender Gary Rowett decided to take a fresh air swing. It was easier to score. Sunderland's Boxing Day journey was to Tranmere, never a happy hunting ground for the red and white. They've only ever won once at Prenton Park. Scott Taylor made sure history repeated itself, only Sunderland's second league defeat of the season.
Despite that disappointment, a record crowd of 41,433 turned out two days later to welcome crew to the Stadium of Light. Sunderland wanted to end 1998 in style. Great now. Nice little flick from Dicio. Quinn lays it back. Dicio! That's a smart goal, and it's Dicio's 11th of the season. His clever flick. Lovely layback there by Quinn, and a good crisp finish for 1 0. Making. It's come through to Bridges. Two defenders on him. Bridges still going. That is just so cool from Michael Bridges. Off the bench again, the fifth time he's got a goal as a substitute this season. Real class. So a happy new year on Wearside. Sunderland were right on target, but a warning from the skipper. Even teams like Crewe have to be taken seriously. I have always said, and I'm so glad I've been proved right, I mean, if anybody looks a game back over the year, anybody's asked me about teams in the league, I've maintained all along that Crew are a very, very good football inside. Yes, they do have their problems, because you don't end up sixth bottom if you haven't got problems. And it's proved recently they've gone to Ipswich, places like that, and they've beat top teams, and they've done very, very well, and they are an excellent footballing team. And on that day, they gave us a little bit of a lesson at times. Um, but... Again, we kept it very tight defensively, didn't allow them to score. Yes, they did have a bit of play. We kept it tight defensively and, then, and scored the goals to win the game. So if you used to be honest there, you've got a team that had absolutely nothing to lose against us and all they could come out of it was credit, but we still beat them. So I think that's, that's a great plus for us as a team as well. <laughs> Nineteen ninety nine kicked off with the third round of the FA Cup. Sunderland were at second division Lincoln. Gavin McCann's first goal for the club was a bit lucky, but it won the game. Disaster for Martin Scott though. A bad ankle injury put him out for the season and effectively ended his Sunderland career. A familiar face was back in Sunderland's starting lineup for the first league game of 99 at Loftus Road. While QPR had Jerry Francis back at the helm, the Wearsiders had Kevin Phillips back up front, and he was back with a bang. McCann out wide now. In a good position. Phillips. Oh, Phillips! Kevin Phillips is back! 33 minutes gone into his comeback, and a fabulous finish. A fine ball from McCann. That's absolutely top draw. Sensational return for Kevin Phillips. On the back corner, Maddox is there, and Rangers are back in it just before half-time, Danny Maddox. Ball trying to get his challenge in. Barrowclough went down a bit awkwardly there. Ball definitely caught him. Made something of a meal of it, but ball is off. Kevin Ball sent off, and Peter Reid cannot believe it. Kiwomia, Melville's the defender. Gowie's at the far post, and Gallon. 2 1 Rangers. Kevin Gallon. Rangers desperately trying to get this ball clear right in the final seconds. Sunderland still scrapping away. Here's Michael Bridges. It needs a good cross. Quinn's there. That's it. 2-2. Two -two. Niall Quinn right at the death. What a great ball in by Michael Bridges. Off the bench again to make a difference. And Quinn pounced. 2-2. Two -two. The Stadium of Light was packed to the rafters eight days later for the visit of fellow promotion hopeful Zipswich. It was the match of the weekend, and the fans were about to see just why Sunderland were bound for the Premier League. Phillips. Now Johnston, while Phillips and Quinn go into the box, and Ball waits at the edge. It's Niall Quinn! Goal number 12 for him for this season, and a vital breakthrough for Sunderland. 
Well, what a goal. Now Quinn, positional sense is brilliant. He doesn't even jump here. The ball is so good from Johnson. He gets in behind Venus. What a great goal. He's about two inches off the ground, directs a header past Richard Wright. Well, one back by Clark. Phillips and Quinn in the middle. And Wright gets it away. Quinn, it's in. Deflected through on route to goal, but Quinn will claim his second. It's a great comeback from Clark. Right needs a bit of help. He gets it semi from Holland, but there he is now. Quinn driving in off Holland, and suddenly Sunderland now rampant. Good stop. Needs a bit of luck. Bit of help, but Quinn with a left foot curls it past Venus. And again, Mark Venus. Naylor calling for the early ball in the box. Gets it now, does Naylor. Good, intelligent header back as well to Vilnius. Now can Holland finish? A bullet of a shot, a cracker of a goal, and Ipswich give themselves genuine hope. Now Dyer, lovely touch to Holland. Could it be another blockbuster? Oh, it nearly was. Sorensen this time, I think it's his right hand. He stretches over just to touch us away. Ten points clear again, though. Is that it? Are you up yet? Oh, you must be joking. No, nobody. Even some of them are even asking me how things are going to go on in the Premiership. Are we strong enough? Absolute rubbish. Everybody here realizes uh, what we have to do to get up. It's nowhere near done yet. And, and if anybody's bothered and, and starts getting a little bit silly and thinking otherwise, just think back to that day in Wembley. How disappointed we were when it didn't come off. Um, that'll soon bring people down to earth who think that we're already up, and, and nobody, Peter Reid and Bobby Saxon certainly won't let anybody in this dressing room think that. And you know, we'll roll on, and hopefully, you know, the rest of January is probably cup time more so than league, but a good February now, and we'll, we'll be well on the way. So, see what happens. Later that day, the club received its first honour of the year. Football in the community officer Bob Oates and skipper Kevin Ball picked up the Services to Sport award. FA Cup draws haven't been kind to Sunderland since Peter Reid's arrival, but at least the trip to Blackburn in the fourth round gave the Wearsiders a chance to test themselves against Premiership opposition. Many thought Sunderland were the better team, but it was former Newcastle United winger Keith Gillespie who scored the game's only goal. The FA Cup dreams were over for another season. But Wembley was still just around the corner. Leicester's Martin O'Neill and Peter Reid got their hands on the silverware in the build-up to the first leg of the Worthington Cup semi-final. The crowd at the Stadium of Light were confident that Leicester had an old stager ready to make his mark on the big occasion. Getting round the back, Cotty, that's a beautiful goal and Leicester have snatched the lead. Is it straight on to it? Cotty's got the loose ball. And again, Cotty punishes Sunderland. McCann knocking that one in. in. It's a goal. And it's going McCann. And maybe Butler got a last touch. Well, the ball's whipped in here. It was difficult to see whether anybody actually got a touch. I don't think anybody did get a touch. Gavin McCann scoring dark from the free kick uh, towards the end of the game. You know, set it up for a sort of a good finale, but it wasn't to be. We didn't get the second goal with the lights, but in the same token, we still got another chance. We're going down a Filbert Street, admittedly with 2-1 behind, but I still think we've got a great chance. 24 hours later, and the Stadium of Light was packing them in once again, only this time for a reserve match. An incredible 33,500 fans turned out to see young striker Michael Proctor snatch a Pontins League winner against a Liverpool side, which included England midfielder Steve McManaman. It meant almost 72,000 had poured into the Wearmouth ground in the space of two days. But the week was going from bad to worse for the first team. Kevin Phillips nearly gave them the lead on his return to Watford. But Nick Wright was the first name on the score sheet for the home side. Sunderland were back in it when Niall Quinn popped up to nod the equaliser. The big Irishman simply doesn't miss from that range. But on this afternoon, that was as good as it got.
Gifton Nell Williams grabbed a spectacular second half winner for Watford and Sunderland were on their way to three defeats in a week. But that was it. They didn't lose again all season. January was by far the worst month in Sunderland's season. Some people were saying the wheels were coming off, but Peter Reid wasn't one of them. In some people's eyes, alarm bells were ringing. But I think if you look, if, if you get routed in, in them games, you can understand it. But in them games, uh, I thought we were particularly unlucky at um, Blackburn. Um, we got beat 1 0, and Clarkey ran onto a ball, and I thought at the time he was, he was on. And then the uh, lines have been given him offside, and then Gillespie's got one where we've just gone to sleep off a, a long throw. Um, but Kevin Phillips was back amongst it then, even though he wasn't at his. Uh, the sharpest uh, in that game. Um, we just, I just felt that we were, we were um, we were unlucky in the games, and, and there was no need to, to push any panic buttons. You know, he, he last day, to be fair, Leicester come here, and we're by far the better side. You know, we, the the boxed us, and they deserved the win, and we were just off the pace in that game. Watford, Watford could have gone either way. We ought to be two one, but we played well. We played well enough to win it, but it's a difficult place to go. And um, if I'm not mistaken, I think Watford might be the last time we got beat. So even that mini crisis, uh, we got over it, and uh, the bandwagon sort of kept on rolling. Lee Clark had missed those defeats against Leicester and Watford, but he was back to boss the midfield as Sunderland returned to winning ways at home to Swindon. But love, summer beat, knew that Macon was up supporting him. Quinn's went out a good run, Quinn takes it in stride, and an excellent finish, and Niall Quinn puts Sunderland into the lead. And again, it comes from another one of those really perceptive runs from the big tall number nine. Good position this for the free kick then. Some of the right foot squares it. Johnston, deflection in. Well, Johnston hit it. And Phillips was the man in the middle who may have got the final touch. Bristol City took a point off Sunderland at the Stadium of Light back in September. They came within minutes of a repeat performance at Ashton Gate. But a late penalty gave Kevin Phillips the chance to snatch a win. He was ice cool from 12 yards, 1-0 to Sunderland. Sunderland was stretching away in the promotion race. Now Peter Reid's men had their Wembley chance. They were 2-1 down to Leicester as they kicked off at Filbert Street in the second leg of the Worthington Cup semi-final. The old Fox was ready for one last fling. But this time, it was Sunderland who got off to a flyer. Ball getting it back. Clark having a look up. And he's looking for Quinn. Quinn got the header in, and he scored. It's Niall Quinn. Sunderland have taken the lead here at Filbert Street and it's level on aggregate, and that goal has been coming, and it's Niall Quinn. And the set-piece falls Leicester's way. Launches forward. So to Elliot. Elliot challenging for it. It's fallen for Savage. Had to check back in. Somebody need to get the second way. Sorensen's come a long way for it. Didn't get it. And Cotty has, and it's Cotty again. That's his third goal in this semi-final, and it's pulled this second leg back to 1-1. Here is Bridges. That's a good ball in, just a little ahead of there. Fine save. Excellent work that by Casey Keller. And Quinn very nearly did it again. The First Division trophy was on its way, but the Premiership trophy beat it to Wearside. It was just making a flying visit this time, but, well, you can dream, can't you? So, no trophy yet, and no return to Wembley this season. 
But three days after the disappointment at Leicester, 41,000 fans gave the players a rousing reception as they prepared to face Wolves, who'd give Peter Reid plenty to chew on. Quinn just knocking it down for Johnston, who's through the middle here. Johnston with a great chance, and he's put it away as well. And Sunderland have got the lead, just under 10 minutes gone. And Alan Johnson gets his first goal for three and a half months. Look at that, excellent first touch. Oh, I never left the ball, knew exactly what he wanted to do, and did it. Keen is away through the middle, this bounce is important. Melville well underneath that one. Ball thundering into his challenge, but it's still Wolves knocking the ball about with some pace. Melville, that's going to be a goal. And real confusion there at the heart of the Sunderland defence. And Andy Melville has put through his own goal then. That's a really decent one to fight for. Phillips is up there. Gray turning it into the middle. Quinn trying to reach it. Only half clear. Clark needs to hit it. Looking for the room for the shot, but the ranks closed in front of him. Now it's Summerby. Absolutely storming finish. Ball is there. And it's Johnston. And it's into the middle. And it's Quinn. And it's there. Sunderland have grabbed it. Peter Reid is absolutely ecstatic about that. And it's the big man, Niall Quinn, who has pounced in stoppage time. Wolves just could not get the ball away. Kevin Ball was competing for it. Ricochets Quinn, and he belted it into the net. I think Wolves are one of the, the better teams in the division. Uh, they work very hard. They've got some good players. Obviously, some uh, very good centre forwards. Yeah, the boy Keane, very lively, and he's always likely to score goals. Um, and it was it was one of the harder games, but to to get the three points from that one, I think. I mean, over the season, I mean, the lads have been superb anyway, and uh, even at home, I mean, we're very hard to beat. And that was one game uh, what the lads were really really up for, and uh, we got the right result in the end. With over 42,000 seats at the Stadium of Light, Sunderland fans don't have too many problems getting to see their team. When they're at home, that is. When the team walked out at Oxford's Manor Ground, there was another capacity crowd waiting for them. Unfortunately, only a small number were from the northeast due to restrictions on tickets. But while some stood in the rain in Oxford, 30,000 others watched the game from the comfort of their living rooms. But for the first time, people were asked to pay for the privilege. Pay-per-view football matches are the future, like it or not. The match at Oxford was historical, but it certainly wasn't memorable. The TV executives would have been as disappointed with the match as the fans. Gavin McCann had Sunderland's best chance. But they might have come away with nothing. Late on, the ball fell to Andy Thompson on the edge of the box but the Oxford substitute saw his shot come back off a post. Thomas Sorensen grabbed the rebound. It finished goalless. By the end of February, the wheels were firmly back on the promotion wagon. Sunderland were pulling away from the trailing pack. Just two days later, Sunderland entertained Portsmouth. Danny Diccio replaced Niall Quinn in attack, and the replacement gave the home side the lead after just nine minutes with a brave header. They had to wait until the last half hour before the lead was doubled and the win secured. Kevin Phillips met Nicky Summerby's cross. Alan Ball's Portsmouth were going home empty handed. We've got a fortress here. Uh, they're strong, they really work hard and they've, they've got people who can put it in the back of the net. They're, you know, their league position doesn't lie, and I wish them well because these people deserve it. These are fabulous fans. Peter Reid's bogey team Norwich were next up on Wearside, but this time the Sunderland promotion juggernaut would prove too much for them. Square for making. A nice one by Williams and a good flick, and Phillips hits it. Tremendous goal, that. Kevin Phillips. What an excellent piece of build-up as well. Darren Williams with a little clever flick that left Kevin Phillips in space. And he absolutely whipped that past Andy Marshall.
Bradford City were the surprise contenders for promotion. So when Sunderland went to Valley Parade, it was a real six-pointer. But they always look to cut above on a wet night in Yorkshire. Rain still hammers down. Oh, it's in. And Reed celebrates. And it's big Mark Quinn. Quinn watching there at the near post. And just that glancing header inside the near post. It was perfectly placed. The win was even more impressive as Sunderland had to play the last 15 minutes without goalkeeper Thomas Sorensen, who suffered a concussion. With no replacement on the bench, goal scorer Niall Quinn grabbed the gloves and kept the Bradford forwards at bay to secure a vital three points that sent Sunderland away and clear at the top. With 15 points clear of third place now. Not far to go to the Premiership. <sighs> We're getting there. Um, let's just say we're chilling the champagne. Thomas Sorensen hadn't recovered by the time Sunderland went to Grimsby, so standby Andy Marriott was given his first opportunity between the sticks. He came away with a clean sheet. Nice bit of passing there. Somebody with the long ball. Here's Phillips. No problem for Kevin Phillips. Sunderland ahead five minutes into the second half. What a great long ball that was, though, by Nicky Summerby. Excellent first touch and the finish as well. Summerby again wide in a good crossing position. Fine pass. Quinn is there. And Clark. Lee Clark's first of the season. 2 0. Sunderland in complete control. Quinn just got his foot to that one and did enough, and Clark finished it off. The Great Dane was back for the Bolton game. Another record crowd at the Stadium of Light. Bolton had to win to stay in touch at the top. But Sunderland were getting close now, and no one was going to get in the way. And now it's Kevin Phillips breaking. Kevin Phillips with a chance and superbly taken. Still with defenders to beat. Fish left for dead and the finish clinical. And Makin looking to switch it out wide to Johnston. And Johnston having a run at Cox as he likes to do from this position. Johnston will be so dangerous. See what I mean? It's 2-0 now, Sunderland, Alan Johnston cutting in from that left-hand side and so deadly. It's a nice pass to Pear Branson and what a cracking goal. That was really well struck. And the break is on now and it's Clark and Phillips is wide. The Cox got the tackle in. The crowd didn't like it but this game is still moving and Phillips is still running. And there's danger here, and there's Johnston. And it's a goal again for Johnston. And Johnston then was on to that half chance. Johnston knew what he wanted to do, but I don't think Jesker Leinen did. Do you think Sunderland looked like a premiership team at the moment? I think the, the first thing is to, to get there. They're nearly there. Then I know Peter, uh, El Assessi's squad, uh, assess where he needs to strengthen. Uh, and he will have to strengthen, but that's his priority, uh, and I wish him good luck. Only eight games to play now. Sunderland were cruising towards the Championship. Five wins out of five in March had seen the race for the Premiership all but one. It was a crucial time in the season, uh, the March, you know, because it's a time where results matter. But and on hard, the players' uh, performances were excellent as well, you know. Um, that's when you, you're looking, on the training ground especially, and you're looking, is there a sign of nerves? Is there a sign pressure's getting to the players? But on the contrary, they were, they were lively in training. Um, very, very good spirit. And in the dressing room before games, you know, that, that confidence and steely determination, that sort of inbred in players, you know, and as a manager, um, I just sometimes was very, very confident with the attitude of the players. And all through the march, um, they were outstanding, some great results, and, and thoroughly deserved.
fully deserved and uh, players win managers uh, them awards and certainly my players through March did that excellently well. The holiday weekend saw Dennis Smith's West Brom at the Stadium of Light. They brought the country's top scorer, Lee Hughes. But he could only watch as the Wearsiders turned up the heat again. Now it's with Phillips, tries the shot and gets the goal. Kevin Phillips, another goal out of very little indeed. As well to find Phillips, good touch for Gray. Quinn in the middle. Oh, great reactions from Whitehead. Another classic move. An excellent service for Quinn. Just couldn't get it past the keeper. Oh, that's one. Oh, tremendous shot. Only his second of the season. Quinn had only just been denied. The ball never cleared properly. And Clark was there, waiting to crack in a second. Somebody then with this free kick. The bodies lined up towards the far post. Phillips, it's gone in, it's three, it's Phillips again. And Sunderland are carrying on into this second half in just the same confident vein. Corner, Summerby, looking for Craddock, who's come up. And Butler was there, and Phillips is looking the hat-trick. Great reactions from Phil Whitehead. Easter Monday and Sunderland made the trip to Selhurst Park to face cash-strapped Crystal Palace. Everything was going well when Kevin Phillips gave them the lead with a free header from a corner. The game had been in doubt as the Palace players had refused to play unless the club guaranteed they'd be paid. There was no hint of dissent on the pitch as they stormed back to take a point. Clinton Morrison was in the right place at the right time. He could even afford a drink afterwards. The fans' new promotion was a formality now. It was just a matter of when it happened. If Sunderland beat Huddersfield Town and Bradford lost, then that was it. And Clark's away now. He's got Quinn in the middle. Here's Niall Quinn. Still Quinn going. That's going to go in, yes. That's over the line. They all count for Niall Quinn. And he just about did enough. It was determination from here on in. And he just about rolls over that line. Summerby now. Another excellent ball in from Summerby, Phillips underneath it. Johnston, that's a classic goal. So sharp. Summerby's cross, Phillips lay back, Johnston's finish. 2-0 to Sunderland, but Bradford had beaten Portsmouth, so the party was on hold. Not for long, though. <laughs> 6,000 Sunderland fans made the trip to Bury. One more win and promotion was official. The supporters were going to enjoy this one. So are the team. And in keeping with the whole season, they did it in style. Gray getting to it first. Some have been out, looking for the room for the shot. Carly had to beat it away. Phillips brought down there the tackle. And the penalty's been given, I think. So, Kevin Phillips to give them the lead for the penalty spot. No hesitation at all. And they inch closer and closer to the Premiership. Thanks to Kevin Phillips, 19th of the season. Hit it fairly straight, but Kylie committed himself. Well, that's good work by making. Still got more to do, mind. And he knocks it back. Oh, that's a fantastic strike. Darren Bullock has got very level with an absolute thunderbolt. Well, oh, that's a real stunner for Sunderland. Some of me now getting it into the middle, and there's Quinn. And they've hit straight back. 
and they're back in the lead, and it's Niall Quinn, and that was another complete mess for Berry. Well, we see uh, some of it here. Good ball into the danger area. Goalkeeper has to make a decision. Distracted by the defender, spills it, and Quinn says, thank you very much. Very convincingly cleared, the ball, seeing the glory, seeing it again, that was more effective, the ball's loose, Clark, Kylie on his line, but he can do nothing about that one, and it's Kevin Phillips again, and Sunderland are flying high, Phillips on the spot once more, Sunderland are surely there now. Johnson with a corner now. Well, that's another one, and it's Phillips again, and what a time to get a hat-trick. He is absolutely on fire now, and Sunderland are burning a path to the Premiership. Well, again, good right-footed corner, but again, shocking defending. Phillips on the spot, great clinical finish again. And now Peter Reid can have a really good smile. scoring and got one back and it's Chris Wales who's come forward to get it well Phillips now could be on for another one Phillips absolutely glorious that is the premiership in the grand style it's four for Phillips Peter Reid well mighty grin and start celebrating that was top draw well, you could see it on his face, couldn't you? The way he shaped up, just made half a yard, touched the ball to the side and a little chip. Saw the goalkeeper off his line, just dinked it over the top of him. A quality finish from a quality goal scorer. It's goodbye, Gig Lane, Old Trafford, Highbury, Stamford Bridge. Here we come. Sunderland are back in the Premiership. All those thoughts of Wembley are put to one side. Once and for all, those Sunderland fans, so many of them at Gig Lane tonight, will have been at Wembley and experienced the trauma and the bitter, bitter disappointment that this team has bounced back from that adversity in the most astonishing fashion. Everything is right for them. They've brought players in who gel together. They've got the framework to build on. They've got fantastic support. One of the best stadiums in the country and now we're side expects. It's a tough place to come and uh, we knew we needed to win and it's a great result and uh, just listen to it, they deserve it and we deserve it, we play some great stuff and we're delighted and uh, we haven't won the league yet but we're damn close. Great night for you personally as well. Guys, brilliant, you know, I was desperate for my hat trick, I've had some great chances of late and uh, to get four in the game to, to, you know, to clinch championship, uh, you know, to clinch promotions, brilliant, you know, I'm going to enjoy the occasion now. Last time we went up was great, this is going to be even better. Sunderland have become a force now, I guarantee that. Just like I say, thanks to all the supporters, this was for you tonight, thank you. Peter, well done. You looking forward to playing in the Premiership next season? I, yeah, I am. I mean, it's been a fantastic uh, evening. The supporters have been brilliant and, and the players have put on a great show. I mean, I'm not overly delighted about the show because I think they had too many efforts on goal, but as a spectacle, it must have been uh, brilliant. And, and Kevin, what can you say about Kevin and Niall, um, they're finishing. I mean, that, that, that last finish just put the icing on the cake. I'm, I'm absolutely delighted, and I can't put it into words. Mission accomplished. Sunderland were back in the Premiership. So how did they celebrate? After the game, there's a little bit of muted celebration from our point of view, because we still had an important game on Friday, and we wanted to win the Championship in style, so we didn't want to go out on the hoy and get absolutely legless and, and never know who was coming or going. But we went back, we had a game of table tennis because all the lads were hyper, so we were never going to sleep. So we played table tennis and we got back to Durham, had a few drinks, very steady. And I remember sitting out the front of my house at six o'clock in the morning with a cup of coffee and a hot cross bun. There was about a foot of snow around me, eight inches to a foot of snow. And I just sat there with a big smile on my face and thought, brilliant, we've done it. And anybody looking out the window must have thought, what the bloody hell is he doing? Like, you know, but it was just my moment, do you understand? I came round the corner from being dropped off in the taxi and, uh, and Luke and Natasha had been on the computer and they'd literally decked the front of the house out in red and white saying, well done, son, and well done, dad, and well done, SFC, on promotion. And 
I'll be honest with you, that meant the world to me, that honestly, to walk around the corner and see they'd made the effort to do that. And they'd literally stuck them all over the house. I re felt really, really chuffed. And I think that was like a real moment of satisfaction. Promotion achieved. Now for the championship. One point at Barnsley would ensure that Sunderland took the first division title. But they went home with all three points. Phillips. Great. Quinn helping it into the path of Nicky Summerby. And this time it's 1 0. Great finish on the right foot, drills it low. Bullock no chance. Three Barnsley defenders against two Sunderland forwards. And Summerby says thank you very much. Keeps it low. Good power. 1 0. Bullock has picked out Piri. Here's Lee Clark and suddenly sees space to run into. And he's got it through and it's gone all the way. And Lee Clark puts Sunderland 2 0 ahead and closer to the dream of realising the championship. Clark can't believe his luck. It was Moses who pushed up, looked for an offside decision. It's a little side foot, lovely little tuck past Tony Bullock. Phillips has tried to follow in. I'm glad he didn't get a touch on it because it'd have been offside, I think. But Clark, I said his fitness is improving game by game, making a great run forward. Hignett with the corner. And a good effort in this in from Sheeran. Eden. Forced back by Johnston. And he's given it away to Kevin Phillips. Can Phillips go all the way through here? Oh, oh that is a wonder strike! What a way to crown the first division championship win! Oh, Clark makes a good run, but what about this? This is magnificent. That is pure, absolute quality. He's got an option of a reverse pass, he doesn't need it. That is brilliant. Someone said to me, at what point during the season you really thought, right, this is it, we are champions, was when I was right behind Kevin Phillips and he's gone with the ball and he's opened himself out and he's curled the ball in the top corner and I just thought, what a goal, we're champions like that. And I did run around with a smile on my face for the last five minutes and it was great from my point of view. My wife, Sharon, and Luca came down to watch the game and it was a, a momentous moment in my career. With promotion assured and the championship won, Peter Reid started building for the Premiership. Danish under-21 international Carsten Freygaard arrived from Lingby. I like players who can handle the football, uh, pass and move, and certainly Carlson can do that. And um, he's got pace, he's, uh, his lads have got pace. And an eye for the goal, I think, I think he's a player who will excite the Sunderland fans. Um, another player who will excite them because I think we've already got exciting players here, but certainly Carlson is a good attacking player as well. £1.8 million was paid for the goal-scoring midfielder. He may find it hard to break into the first team, but he's got no worries about making the move from Denmark. I wanted to come to England to play football, and uh, I spoke to Peter Reid, I spoke to Thomas Sanderson, and uh, everything about the club seems great. You know, so that's a great stadium, a great atmosphere, you know. Uh, great fans, so I'm looking forward to play here, of course. If the new signing was a boost for the club, it was nothing compared to the news that Kevin Phillips and Michael Gray had been called into the full England squad for a friendly match with Hungary. 16 years had passed since the last Sunderland player made an England party. Now they had two. As as you can. <laughs> with the gates to the Premiership now open, Chairman Bob Murray decided he needed some for himself. The Murray Gates will be a fitting tribute to a man who's quietly turned the club around. He moved them to the Stadium of Light. Now he'd watched on proudly as Peter Reid built a team fit to grace that stadium. Later on that afternoon against Sheffield United, the fans had the chance to salute their heroes on their first return to Wearside since becoming champions of Division One. 41,000 of them filled the stadium again but for once, when the whistle blew for kickoff, the action pretty much stopped. 
With England new boy Kevin Phillips having to miss the game after his daughter was taken ill just before kickoff, Sunderland lacked their usual punch up front, and the only meaningful chance created during the whole 90 minutes came when Alan Johnston thumped a shot off the foot of a post. A goalless draw was not what the fans were hoping for, but they could forgive the team one off day after such a tremendous season. Plenty of the fans would vote for Peter Reid as Prime Minister. But the boss and his chairman had been invited to number 10 to celebrate their amazing season of success. They were given the grand tour at Downing Street. The Premiership promises to be tougher, so it's nice to know that the club has friends in high places. Kevin Phillips made his expected England debut in Budapest, and the night was even more memorable as Michael Gray also gained his first cap. After Phillips' impressive performance in Hungary, it was back to the league as Sunderland completed their away fixtures at Stockport and the striker again showed what the Premiership's in for by grabbing the only goal of the game in typical fashion. That took his tally to 24 for the season. Sunderland's reserves again attracted a huge crowd to the Stadium of Light as they went for the club's second title of the season. Derby were the opposition, but were no match for the home side, as young star Michael Proctor grabbed two goals in a 4-1 win that meant the second string had won the Pontins Premier League Championship, beating off the likes of Manchester United and Liverpool. Yet more success for the fans to enjoy, but the big celebrations were still to come. The last day, Niall Quinn was everyone's choice as player of the year. Birmingham were the opponents, time to party. Well, as Republica have been singing live, they're hot, they're ready to go, and here comes Sunderland for what they hope is the last time in the first division. The champions take the field, it's been a spectacular preview to this match. Fireworks, the live music, balloons, a quite astonishing build-up. And it's got to be said, Sunderland have got this spot on off the pitch and they just hope now the team is going to do the same once the game kicks off. But what a finale to a season. Sorensen came for it and decided against it. Oh, that's an excellent save. Oh, that's against the bar as well by Hughes. And it's still not gone in. Oh, unbelievable escape. Here comes Makin. Again, thinks about hitting it and does do. Oh, just past the half line. He's still waiting for that goal. They left themselves slightly open at the back there, and they've been punished for it. Look at the Queen. He gets there, it's off the line. Quinn. Frank's gone up on the near side, play continuing, they're appealing, Phillips has put it in, and then he's 1-1. Phillips is 25th of the season, and Sunderland are back in this one. Sunderland looking full of busy again, Phillips pushes it wide for Summerby. Quinn's there, no doubt about that one. And the partnership in harness again, no, Quinn. 21 today then for the player of the season. The manager and his skipper, they've walked this way before. Peter Reid and Kevin Ball. Two more committed men, it will be very hard to find. For Kevin Ball, the second time in three years, that as skipper, he takes the honours. And Kevin Ball holds that trophy aloft for the second time, and he really must hope that that is the end of the first division for Champions Sunderland. A glorious moment to savour, but the start of something even bigger. And those fans have seen their team do it the hard way. The agony of missing out last season 
and they have bounced back in record-breaking fashion. Peter, they're playing your song. Uh, it's, uh, it's a great occasion. I can't, can't speak highly enough for the supporters. It's been a really great day in there. The players, everything about the football club at the moment is on fire. Sunderland fans have seen their team promoted to the highest level six times, three times in the 90s. This is one party they're quite happy to never receive another invitation to. That's what it's all about. Days like this, um, very special. You want to do it, and you want to be back with the big boys and in the big stadiums, and this is a big stadium. The fans deserve Premiership football, the stadium deserves it, and uh, the players deserve it as well, so... Sunderland until I die, it says. A man from Hastings, but you wouldn't believe it today. Well done, lads. That's the message from Wearside. I mean, you can see it for yourselves, the atmosphere is just outstanding, and, and every single one of them deserve it, it's fantastic. Peter Reid takes a final bow. See you in the Premiership. Kevin Shaw's up trophy, what's it mean? Uh, what's it mean? That means we're champions. Sunderland are back in the Premiership where they belong. And it's a real good feeling, take it from me. The final Division One table makes impressive reading. 46 games played, an incredible 31 wins, just three defeats and a record 105 points. Satisfaction for everyone connected with the club. Nowhere more so than in the boardroom. We've had uh, two seasons, really, of tremendous football since we walked into the stadium. And these lads have played with great style, panache and passion. And they've been so enjoyable to watch. Uh, perhaps the most exciting period in the club's recent history. We've had 24 games unbeaten. We've had more clean sheets than ever before. More points. It's record after record. And we've now got nearly eight full internationals, current internationals in the squad which we've never seen before, never in the club's history. So it's good times for Sunland, and I'm sure Pete will make sure that continue. Any message for the future for the fans? Just uh, let's keep together next year. It's difficult, it's testing, uh, but just let's keep together just that one season and battle together. 24 hours later, and the whole city of Sunderland had a chance to celebrate. Kevin Ball leading right from the front as usual he's traveled the road to promotion before but for peter reed and his team this really is the end of a long long journey all those supporters are just following the bus all the way along to seaburn and you had to be here four or five hours earlier to get pole position the whole squad are up there the reserves who won the Pontins League in there with the first teamers who've done the job all the way through to the Premiership. It's been packed houses all the way for Sunderland, and that's absolutely guaranteed when the really big names come to Wearside. I said to the lads at the Newton Club, I said, wait till we get over the brow deal, I said, then you'll really see it. And I tell you, the support from the ground here has been fantastic. And when I come over the Browder Hill, they saw what I meant, and the, the amount of support was here today is absolutely fantastic. I'm glad, I'm so glad it didn't rain tonight, but I know they'd have been there anyhow, but for them I'm glad, but it's a tremendous turn. They've been fantastic all year, and it's been brilliant. Well, Peter, it was special a couple of years ago, wasn't it? But this uh, tops that, doesn't it? Uh, it's been fantastic. I mean, the, the supporters have been brilliant, and it's, it's great to uh, the turnout this evening is fantastic. And, Luckily, the weather's been brilliant as well. Yeah, we were keeping our fingers crossed for that one. I think everyone was, because I just had a new air do, so they won't get that move. Would you experience anything like this in Denmark? I think not even when Denmark won the European Championship, it was like this. Uh, yeah, all credit to the fans. Uh, they've supported us all season, and you can just see now how, how, they're, how much they're behind us, and it really means a lot. Just got one thing to say to you all. This is for every one man jack of gun. Well done. Thank you.
a fantastic finale to an unforgettable season. They were ready to go from day one, and they never faltered. The Premiership awaits. Sunderland are First Division champions.